It also had a, a lot to do with putting this uh, event together, so loved getting his insight. Okay, quick start here. Now, Nate, you'll have to um, forgive me. I'll, it'll take me a second to get everybody's name you know, <laughs> fresh, but you feel free to just, you know, you know these guys probably a little bit better than me. Well, this is going to be a really terrific game. There's a lot of talented kids playing in this game. Um, T.J. Dozier right now with the ball just shot a deep three. And uh, several uh, guys who've had a lot of success on the AAU scene this summer. Um, I think there's a couple of upward stars out here today. And uh, Jared Coleman from Southern Stampede, 16s. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of talent going to be, be on the court for this game. That's right. And we, and we actually have seen a lot of some of these guys. You mentioned uh, P.J. Dozier. He's number 22 in white. He's got the ball now. He'll lead this little delayed break. Nice pass. Right. Dozier sees the court so well. I think it's one of the things that makes him such a good player is his, his ability to see the play and create opportunities for his teammates as well. That's right. Now that's number 71. That's Trey Smith from Hillcrest. Okay. Be one of the, the, the top seniors in South Carolina this year. Hillcrest should be a, a very good team with uh, Tyler Hooker and DJ Brooks and Trey Smith. Uh, be one of the favorites to come out of the upper state in 4A. Yeah, I really hope DJ's okay. After yeah, that's down. a scary thing to see in an exposure event. It's Javis Howard from Irma with a nice jump hook. That's yes. a, a kid who played for the Upward Stars and uh, uh, is going to be a really, really solid player as he continues to develop. Just a junior? Yeah, just a junior. Uh, uh, Irma, uh, you know, they lost uh, Jordan Roper, but they're going to be very good again this year with, with uh, Javis and Justin Mackey and Dieter Browning. Uh, going to be very good. Trey Smith with the ball now. Hits Javis for a transition basket. Yeah, Javis is a very impressive guy, live body. He showed his jump hook a second ago. I've seen that quite a bit. He's about, what, 6'7", Coach? Yeah, he's 6'7", and he's a very, very solid frame. I think the biggest thing with, with Javis is just developing the confidence um, to be as good as he can be. He's got all the tools you want, um, and I think he's going to have a really a breakout year this year. Yeah. This is Caleb Duggan out of uh, St. James. Uh, he's a very good player as well. Uh, Dozier unable to handle that. He reached out with the one hand. Okay, so that's number 58, Shahid Robinson out of Ridgeview. This is his home gym. Right. Howard with another rebound, kicks it to Duggan. Yeah. Finds Dozier. Dozier from the left wing. Not close on that one. That's the, the one thing about these exposure events. It usually takes a couple of minutes for the team to figure out what they need to do and sure. how, to, how to work together. Well, you know, you saw that the first game. Uh, the, te the team won, the black team get, gets out to a 30-12 lead. Next thing you know, team two led by Jalen Shaw and uh, Devontae Robbins, Washington and some of these guys, now they're up 15. You know? Yeah, I, I thought I was very impressed with the way team two re re rebounded. Uh, Devontae Washington and Kevin Rowell did a great job late in the game, and Jalen Shaw is really good. He sure is. He sure is. Now that was number 71. That's Trey, Trey Smith again. And again, Trey Smith's another really good player. Yeah, out you know, of Hillcrest, six foot four senior. And those are guys, uh, I think Jalen and Trey are guys that will definitely be in uh, uh, contention to be one of the elite five players in South Carolina this year when the coach's decision puts that out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Coach, um, can you explain that? You know, I, I've been talking about all, all day how this isn't your everyday exposure camp. You know, the, the talent's very good because you have invitation only. Um, the guys kind of know each other, so they're competing. They're not taking it easy out there. But in addition to all that, there's uh, there are things that you can earn here by impressing the fellow coaches in the South Carolina Basketball Coaches Association. Can you explain that? Yeah, what, what the Coach Association does is uh, – they, we have a, a elite five players overall, and that's the, the best five players in South Carolina, regardless of class, uh, regardless of classification. Um, and then each classification picks the top five seniors. And this is one of the, the easiest ways for a number of coaches to see players from all over the state. You know, not, not everybody gets out during the spring and summer and sees these guys playing for the AAU teams. And during the season, you know, you're mainly focused on your schedule and the teams that you're going to face. This is a chance for players to play in front of everybody. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's the reason why you know, as you know, Coach, we uh, we get around in the basketball gyms and we do a lot of this broadcasting stuff. And, but this is the only time we've come to an exposure camp because um, we feel like this one's unique. It's special, and we're proud to be here. Right. Well, that's one of the things that we're trying to do. Is this is you know this is not a money making venture. We'll we'll, we'll be lucky to break even. Um, you know we, we don't charge the kids an exorbitant amount. We just want to get the guys a chance to be seen by other coaches, to be seen by the Division two coaches and junior college coaches that come out, and just give them a chance to uh, to to show people what good players they are. Nice ball movement there by the white team. Dozier yeah. hit Trey Smith and dished it back to Javis Howard for the basket and a foul. Yeah, you know, and th there's another example, not your everyday exposure camp. So you have the first thing that usually doesn't happen is Dozier gives it up. <laughs> and then Trey Smith, who catches it, gives it up. Usually there's not a lot of giving it up at an exposure camp. Right, I think the one thing that facilitates that is this is a little different structure and a little different environment. And these guys have, um, you know, all three of the players involved in that play are very well coached. Yeah. You know, P.J. Dozier you know, plays for his dad at Spring Valley and has played for the Upward Stars with this summer. And Trey Smith plays for Reggie Choplin and has a lot of success. And then Javis, you know, plays for Tim Whipple, you know, coaching legend in South Carolina. So right. um, th those three players know a little bit of basketball. Yes. Just got some substitutions on the court for uh, for Black. You know, Jalen Reed from uh, Rock Hill High School is out there, number 52, just shooting a three from the top of the key and making it. Yeah, uh, Number 97, Rontavius McClure from Northwestern High School, taking a break from football, come play a little basketball. Yeah. Yeah, lots of good prospects out here. I don't want to put any pressure on these guys, but this, this might be the best matchup of camp. So yeah. th there's, uh, you know, all the way down both rosters, you're looking at guys that are Division One prospects. So should be an exciting game. So you, you were telling me about Tyler Hooker, number 47. By the way, that is Rontavius McClure. Before we go to Hooker, McClure is a live body, and he, he he's a great guy to play with, right? Oh uh, yeah, McClure is uh you know did a great job. He played for uh, for us on the Upward Star 17 under team, and uh, just a terrific athlete, rebounder, um, defender. Um, really, his, his, he's going to make some coach real happy because of the way he competes and his ability to guard multiple positions. You know, he can guard a post because he's so strong. He can also guard the perimeter because he's such a great athlete. That's why he catches so many passes for Northwestern. Yeah. And that was Tyler Hooker that just finished on the break. Yeah. You mentioned him. Hooker's before. another one of those guards from Hillcrest. Yeah. I mean, Hillcrest has three. Um, I'm not sure there's anybody with three as good as those three with yeah. Smith, Brooks, and Hooker. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so Hooker will come the other way with the ball, number 47 in black. He'll get a screen from Jalen Reed. Reed roll, no, he actually pops, catches it. That's number 60, Qua, Qua Copeland? Cope, yeah. <laughs> we'll call him from Cope. South, from <laughs> south side. <laughs> yeah, from south and, side. And another, another very good player. Yeah. Jalen Reed with the rebound, showing his perimeter skills, pushing the ball off the court. Hooker with a tough finish. Wow. <laughs> that was a great play. You get your post 6-7 guy kicking it to your 5-11 guard for reverse layup in traffic. Right. Falling down. Reed unable to get, keep control. Now, Jalen Reed is the son of J.R. Reed, right? He is. University of North Carolina standout back in the 1820s when I was a kid. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's one of the signs of aging when you start seeing guys' sons who you watched play when you were a little younger. Well, you know, we broadcasted, there's Javis Howard. Nice, nice little creation from Chris Boyd out of mid-Carolina. We broadcasted the Peach Jam games, and I'll try to make it quick, but um, that is number 40, 41. Who's that, Coach? That's uh, Notorious Booker out of Newberry. Out of Newberry, okay. yeah, state runner-up in, in AA. Yeah. That's and Booker with the rebound yeah. again, pushing the ball to the court. Finds McClure. Jalen Reed with the finish. That was a good pass also from Copeland, so I'll be quick. So Kennedy Meeks, I'm yeah. sure you've seen him, yeah. makes a turnaround jump shot in the post, going towards the baseline over on the left side in the Peach Jam. And I, I, I referred to Patrick Ewing. And, you know, the guy that's calling with me, he doesn't even know who I'm talking about. And so I'm like, wow, I am very old. I don't even know who Patrick Ewing is. All right, here we go. More subs for the white team. Right. Caleb Duggan back in. Uh, Chris Dwyer in. 
uh, Richie Alston from Wando in, and to various Hampton. Aust yeah, and Austin Kyles from South Aiken coming in. Okay. So this is Caleb Duggan. Yeah, Duggan's an interesting guy. He's a, he's a very, very good playmaker. Uh, does a lot with the ball in his hands. Gets to the free throw line a, a ton of times. Okay. A turnover. A miscommunication. I think that's Hampton who threw that one away. To various Hampton out of Berea. Copeland off the. This is Hooker back to Reed. Should be a little, con little confusion there on offense. Yep. There it is. Reed with the roll. Good nice pass. look. Hit it. Get back up it's a little frustrating to watch that. At, you know, at, at this level, when players attack the basket and, and go up on the right side with the right, right hand, hand or the left hand with the right. Yeah. So much easier to be effective when you can play with both hands. Yes. Yeah. Here comes Copeland. He turns Lost it over. The handle. Oh, he's going to keep possession. Hey, free Lance, free so Lance. I see Reed, uh, Jalen Reed, setting these high screens and kind of popping. Um, he can shoot it from deep, and he's got size. He does. He's a, a very hey, versatile horse, player. Horse, I think, uh, you know, I, depending on which level he ends up at, he's a yeah, guy yeah, who can play yeah, maybe yeah, some three yeah, and four. Yeah. You know, definitely be a, a tough matchup for some fours. There he is stepping out and hitting the three, as we're talking about. Um, you know, it's definitely a very versatile skill set. Now, it, I should look it up real quick, but is he at Hillcrest as well? No, he's at Rock Hill. Rock Hill, sorry. A Reed saves the ball out of bounds there, creates a fast break opportunity. Uh, Hooker finds McCoy for a layup. That's a nice look. This is Hampton. Gets a little screen, rejects it. A little too much dribbling maybe, but he finds Duggan. Nice little jump shot. That's number 17. That's Richie Austin from Wanda. He cuts the, cuts the lead to nine with that shot. They needed a basket right there. Team three is uh, pretty much dominating the action so far. So that's Hampton who's fouled on his way to the basket. First game was a good one, right, Coach? Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, the, it's uh, one thing about these kind of events is you know, well, 10, well, 109 to 94 game. There's yeah. not a lot of defense right. being played, <laughs> but uh, a lot of very talented kids making plays. Like a lot of Trey Smith right now with the ball in traffic, um, finds Chris Dwyer, you know, tries to score over Reed. Trey Smith uses the high screen. That's interesting there. So you have Duggan out on the wing and McClure guarding him. And so Duggan, you know, feels like he can take the bigger player, but McClure can, he moves his body well. He's yeah, he'd be a, a, a great, uh, like I said, a great defender because of his ability to do just that. You know, if he gets stuck on a perimeter player, you know, for, for a possession here and there, that's not a tough matchup for him. He's able to keep him in front and he's so long and so, so athletic that he's able to make shots a lot tougher, you know, then. That's number 58, Shahid Robinson out of Ridgeview High School. This is, is his home gym. He's a senior. Uh, Shahid actually started his career at Sumter, played for us as a freshman and sophomore, and uh, played at Ridgeview last year. Duggan kicks it ahead to Austin, who misses the three. Another transition opportunity for Black. There's Robinson again. This is DeMarcus Montgomery. I talked to his coach at Lancaster High School before the event. Um, Julio, what's Julio's last name? Uh, Ricardo Priester. I'm sorry, Ricardo yeah. Priester. Yeah, Ricardo. Um, so he told me some interesting things about De DeMarcus. Hopefully I'll be able to share them in a little while here. Here's Trey Smith on the right wing. Caleb Duggan being guarded by Montgomery. Montgomery goes under the screen. 
Hey, I was told earlier in the day that uh, Doug has picked up an offer from Francis Marion. So. Really? Yeah. Good for him. So I'll try to work this in as we see DeMarcus Montgomery. So uh, Coach Priester tells me that um, DeMarcus is a senior. He, he makes all A's. He's on the A honor roll. And he, um, and you know, just little things like, you know, he plays a huge role with his brothers and sisters, goes home and, um, you know, fixes the dinner and things like that. So just a, he, Coach Priester was very complimentary of uh, DeMarcus as a person. Right. And, and that's, you know, that's something that people, that fans need to remember, especially, you know, you know, high school and college athletes, these, these, these guys are just kids, yeah. you know, they, they, uh, they are much more than what they do on the basketball court, you know, and uh, it's easy to, to watch for an hour and a half or two hours on Friday night or three hours on Saturday and, and think that you know these kids and what they should be doing, but for the reality is uh, most of us don't have any idea what's going on in these guys' lives, and they're, they're a lot more than what, just what they do in basketball. Yeah, that's right. Which is really the reason that Upwards is doing what they're doing with the AAU team is, you know, kind of to provide an, out, an outlet for, for kids who want to compete at a high level while being coached by guys that understand that there's a lot more important things than just basketball. That's right. That's right. And that Upward Stars program is a unique program um, for those reasons and honestly for the fact that it, you know, was so successful so quickly. I mean, you know, you got tournament champions and some of the ch championships in some of the biggest tournaments and um, it was really great to see them come on co see you all come on so strong yeah it was a really you know exceeded our expectations you know we hoped to do a good job um, and to, to do things the, the right way but we had obviously no idea what kind of results it was going to produce but we were we had a very good coaching staff and obviously very good players now um, that is Jared Coleman sorry to interrupt but Jared Coleman number 27 off the feed from PJ Dozier and you mentioned him earlier the kid's a pure shooter. Absolutely. Gary Coleman's probably one of the best shooters in South Carolina. Um, did a great job for Southern Stampede 16s. I didn't get to see them very much because I was with the 17s. We played the Southern Stampede 17s in the championship game of the ice break. Yeah. Uh, beat them on a buzzer beater by Justin Dotson to, right. win, to win our first right. tournament. <laughs> but uh, the, the 16s, I, I, I think they had a lot of success in July. Okay, I'm, I'm picking up a little something from our technical crew. We're going to take a quick break. There's, before I do that, though, there's Jared again with the three from the left wing. Can't give him room. Okay, yeah, we're going to get an instant replay at the next break of Jared Coleman. We'll talk a little bit more about him when we come back. Great little pass from Jalen Reed. Now that to Nick Isaac out of Ridgeview, six foot five senior. Here, here's Jared Coleman, or I think the, I'm sorry, I missed it. Okay, so so that was what you just saw, Jared <laughs> Coleman on the three, working out the kinks a little bit. Coach, this is our first day with instant replay. Right. Well, that's that's a nice, I mean, that's a great thing to have. You know, you see a play, a great play, and the next thing you know, it's coming back up. So that's a, you know, with in a in a game with more breaks, you know, where you have time to do that, that's going to be a really a nice feature. Yeah. Roger. So here's Dozier, one of the best sophomores in the country. Oh, absolutely. Dozier has an un unbelievable ceiling because of his ability to, to play on the perimeter and the fact that he's still growing. You know, yeah. he's going to be a 6'6", 6'7", point combo guard maybe, and uh, just he's going to be really special. We're very fortunate to have him play with us several tournaments and uh, looking forward to having him, have him run with us again. Oh, Jalen Reed. <laughs> prevents the easy basket yeah. by Javis Howard there. Yeah. You know what I like about Dozier? Um, so here we are in exposure camp, and uh, Jerry Coleman's a catch-and-shoot guy, and, you know, he, he recognized that, and he gets some two, three good shots. You know, a guy like Coleman could, could get lost in a game like this right. if it weren't this setting, if, it weren't, if he didn't have a teammate like Dozier. Yeah, Coleman, um, at, for that Southern Stampede team in the Peach Jam, you know, had a few games where he really opened it up. That team uh, went to all the way to the championship game of the 16 and under division. He's out of uh, Greenwood High School, right, right, Coach? That's right. Just a junior, and he'll be inbounding here. This is Hampton. Good look to Howard. Misses and gets his own rebound. I think uh, McCoy got a piece of that one. Those two guys are teammates so, uh, in the summer, so they, uh, Javis might hear about that one after the game. Yeah. So Jav Javis Howard, uh, 
out of Irmo, his teammate, senior Justin Mackey, recently committed to South Carolina. Absolutely, yeah, Justin, uh, Justin really, uh, he's, he's got an example of uh, the, the good side of what can happen in AAU. You know, Justin was very under-recruited going into the spring, but the way he played uh, uh, on the national stage, you know, helping us uh, uh, beat and compete with the best players in the nation, uh, you know, obviously a, a, a big part of that was because of what Justin was able to do, and people recognized that, you know. Uh, that was Chris Boyd on the finish. Here comes Hampton. Javis Howard's doing a great job of running the floor. He's getting himself in position. Looks like every possession to be a, an outlet for the perimeter players. Yeah, he's always around the ball, um, much like Devontae Washington was in game one. Yeah, I, I was really impressed with the two kids from Hartsville in game one. I thought Jalen Shaw um, is one of the most explosive guards in the state, and uh, Devontae Washington late in the game was uh, doing a great job in transition, uh, doing a great job on the offensive glass and putting the ball on the floor and getting baskets. He, uh, they, they, uh, Hartsville won the ch state championship in 3A this year and uh, should be the favorite in AAA as well with, the, with, uh, with those two kids. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it, I was telling Cedric, Coach Simpson in game one, you got a guy like Washington at 6'4 with such a live body. It's almost an advantage over maybe even a 6'7 guy that, that isn't quite as active absolutely. at the high school. A, absolutely. In high school, you know, uh, sometimes the, the, perfect, uh, the perfect player is a 6'5 bouncy athlete, you know, because they're able to do so many things and they're, and they're not. Uh, you know, sometimes in, in high school games, it, big kids don't get the benefit of the doubt. You yeah. know, I, I had Cameron Dunnikin that's playing at Georgia Southern right now, and, um, you know, at, when he really started coming on, he would just get beat to death. Yeah. After games, he'd just say, Coach, I'm sore. Right. And he'd go to the free throw line two times. You know, right. it's just uh, when you're bigger than everybody else, uh, you, you kind of get expected to play bigger than everybody else. Right. So. Well, and then also playing with a guy like Shaw helps. Right, right. And then Hartsville plays very fast and very up-tempo, so, uh, you know, uh, Devontae Washington is perfect for their system. It reminds me of uh, over at Keenan High School. So you got uh, Stroman, great point guard, pure point guard. That's Chris Boyd. That was a terrific play. Yeah. You know, very quick, got in the lane. Yeah, let's let's talk about Chris a little bit. He's uh, at Mid Carolina. That's new to me. Where's Mid Carolina? I believe that's in the like the, the Newberry area. So he's a five foot eight. Uh, senior guard. He, uh, he's he been to the basket several times here. He's an active guy, S a little smaller, but very quick. Yeah, definitely a tough, a tough, tough matchup. Hard to keep people in front of him. Unable to make the free throw. And with 50 seconds left to go in the first half here, we get this gap oh, narrowed oh. down considerably. It's down to a three-point game. So Boyd looking for the carry and ends up getting the foul. That's number 61, Jordan Dingle out of South Aiken. It's close to my neck of the woods. Yeah, South Aiken, the coach by uh, uh, Drew Jernigan. And uh, I think he, he might have gotten a little bit of a bell out there. He yeah. Just, uh, well, <laughs> well, he carried it and then took a real questionable right. shot. He now was, he's uh, in the free throw he's line. He's definitely, definitely going to shoot that basketball. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for fortunate for him, he got to the free throw line. Right. Jalen Reed coming back in the game for Rontavius McClure. Right or no, coming back in for Dingle. Okay. Nice little one-two punch down low for this uh, black team with the yeah, McClure definitely. and Reed. And it's, uh, I guess it's a little different for those guys to be playing together, you know, since they go to Crosstown Rivals with the Rock Hill Northwestern. So okay. Probably won't be this friendly the next time right. they're on the court. Right. Here's Boyd with the pull-up, misses it. Jalen Reed for another three. Hampton oh. ahead to Jared Coleman. Oh my! Oh, with the missed. I didn't know Jared had that <laughs> in him. He didn't finish it, but you know, like to see that. So that's sometimes, uh, you know, that sometimes kids get in trouble with that. Uh, a shooter wants to show people they can do more than shoot, and so they don't play to their strength. Or the driver wants to show people they can shoot, so they don't right. play to their strength. And it's really what they need to do is just like that. It's, uh, of a cap shooter. Capitalize on what you're good at. Yeah. You know, college coaches want to see what you're good at, not that uh, you think you can do something that you can't. Yeah. That's how it's Coleman's third three of the game. Yeah, so, hopefully uh, we can get a replay shooter. of that. You know, the first two, that w they were off uh, off the pass. That one was a little bit of a delayed, you know, kind of dribble into it on the break. Coleman, um, he's amazing to me in the fact that he'll get four shots and a half go, and make man. three of them. Transition. 
that's a, a, a play that in a, in, a, in a real game would have a coach very frustrated. Yes. The best shooter on the court gets an uncontested three. Right. Uh, never a good thing. Right, right. <laughs> but, you know, he's, he's gotten four attempts, and he's made three of them. And, um, and, and, and that's, you know, he's, he's a pure shooter. He's just a pure shooter. I saw in the Peach Jam um, lots of games, you know, they know he's a shooter, so he doesn't, to your point, well-coached teams aren't going give, to give up open looks. So he would go the whole game without getting a look, and then next thing you know, he makes the big one towards the end of the game to give his team a four-point lead or put him back into the game. And so he's just a flat-out bomber. Lots of good players here today. Yeah, um, very, very, very impressive. Uh, very impressive rosters for teams three and teams four. I think. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people was, was stood out there in that first half. I think you know Coleman obviously with his three baskets and uh, Jalen Reed uh, for Team Three uh, really making plays. And uh, you know for not having played together with each other, those guys were doing a pretty good job of uh, uh, of sharing the basketball and uh, playing each other's strengths. That's right. Now, Coach, I'm looking through the roster. Did I miss Quantez Brown, or is he not here? No, he's not here. Yeah. He's not here. He's uh, Quantez is uh, another one of the Upward Stars 16s uh, who was unable to make it. So yeah. He's a tough player, good left-hander. Yeah, of, he's uh, a guy who's really, I think he's going to kind of surprise some people this year because you know, he, uh, he had a tremendous spring and summer for us. And uh, Dorman uh, was so... Uh, Loaded with upperclassmen last year, that uh, that Quantez played on the JV team. So wow. I mean, you're talking about a kid who's with no varsity experience, who's going to come in and, and add a very a, a very good Dorman team, one more weapon. I know, uh, I think Coach Ryan uh, returns 11 11 of his top 12, and, and then adds Quantez to that mix. So I think uh, between Irmo, Richard Northeast, uh, with Aaron Scott and Devonte Anderson, and uh, then Hillcrest and, uh, yeah, and Dorman. No. They're going to be the, the favorites in, the, in 4A in the upper state. Yeah, so we've been talking about the good players, and you see up on the screen we have the Team 4 roster. P.J. Dozier shows us number 86. He's actually number 22. That was a late minute, last minute change. But Dozier, one of the top sophomores in the country, uh, plays basketball for his father at Spring, Spring Valley, right? That's Spring great. Valley High School. Um, his father now make sure I get this right, Perry Dozier. That's yeah, right, Perry yeah. Dozier, and, and, and he, he and his brother Terry Dozier were stars in the 80s for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Yeah, and uh, Perry and Terry are going to be uh, are going to be rivals now. Yeah. So, uh, Terry Dozier just took the job at the new uh, the new high school, Westwood High School, that's opening up. So uh, the, the Dozier uh, brothers will be battling it out this year in, and, uh, and on those, the court. And those two guys, Perry and Terry Dozier, you know, long history, and the fact that they are six foot nine, six foot ten in that neighborhood, it just makes me look at PJ and say, you know, look out, you right. know, because you mentioned six, 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 seven, you know, maybe even taller. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, you know, you that know. skill you set know. is yeah. scary. I mean, that's just, I mean, the the, the bigger he gets, the, the the more unique his skill set will become because uh, he's obviously got the perimeter skills to do to be an elite player, and uh, when you put that in his, uh, the body he ends up with, I mean, that's I think that's why he's such a such a hot prospect you know yeah. it's uh he's really has a chance to be an, an elite special talent quick jump shot from number 48 yeah that was nick isaac out of bridgeview there's trey smith taking it to the basket very, very unselfish play there by trey to pass up the shot and kick it to caleb duggan for a three yeah, you mentioned Duggan out of St. James, senior, five foot eleven. Uh, recently got an offer from Francis Marion, which plays in the Peach Belt Division Two, very tough Division Two conference. Oh, that's a long skip pass to Duggan. He loses the handle and taps it to Trey Smith. Trey Smith is very good at that, getting the ball. I mean, he gets the ball to within four or five feet, doesn't finish the play, but he's one of those guys. It's almost impossible to keep him in front of you without fouling him. Montgomery feeds Reed. Reed from the left wing, just off. Here comes Reed again. He'll nice. finish that. Nice look by number yeah. 11. That's uh, Kevin Crawford from Blythewood. Yeah. You know, the Columbia kid. We got a quick timeout. Yeah, quick timeout. Maybe we can get 
Okay, so we'll see um, the young man from Blythewood, number 11, Kevin Crawford, make this nice feed on a cutting Jalen Reed. So Reed's done a little bit of everything. He's made the three off that pick and pop. He's actually, I think I saw him pop out to the wing off a little screen, make a three. He's cut to the basket a few times. Uh, was he about six seven? Coach? Yeah, he's a uh, yeah, very versatile player. I think uh, you know, the Rock Hill High School has a chance to be very good this year. I, I'm a, a believe one of their one of their better players maybe may have injured himself playing football, which will be a little bit of a, a hit to them. But they uh, returned a lot of talent from last year's team that started off strong and kind of faded as the season went along. But I think uh, Nate Motley, who may have played yeah. in the last game, has moved into Rock Hill and. Uh, with Jalen Reed and Rod Howell and, and some of the other guys they've got. They have a chance to be a very good team. Yeah, yeah, yeah Molly was in the first game. He was tough, and Roger Howell plays there as well. Right, so okay. uh, with, between Howell and Reed, Rock Hill should be very good, very strong on the inside, and then Nate Motley on the perimeter yeah. uh, should, be, should be a good player as well. And a moment ago, we saw Trey Smith, who's probably about to get the ball here, um, get to the basket again and finish. Yeah, that's just that's really his strength, because he's very hard to, uh, to, to get – get in front of I was talking to Coach Chaplin uh, earlier today and I think uh, I think Trey's committed to Charleston Southern and uh, if that's true uh, Barkley Rader Ball and uh, BJ Mackey and those guys have got and Brad Dobbles former coach at Goose Creek have gotten themselves a heck of a player uh, Trey Trey's gonna do great things in the Big South good for him you mentioned BJ Mackey assistant coach there Justin is his son we talked about Justin earlier um, Irmo high school product who's committed to the University of South Carolina two guard senior uh, South Carolina's really putting together an impressive recruiting sure class, are. you know, with Desmond Ringer and getting Sundarius Thornwell to come home and adding Justin Mackey to the mix. I mean, those are uh, yeah. Sundarius and Justin are, you know, both you know South Carolina kids, yeah. both very competitive kids, kind of long, versatile athletes that can defend. Uh, and I think I think those are the kind of guys that Frank Martin wants to get, kind of guys with an edge and a chip on their shoulder. Because yeah. I know just spending some time with Justin. You know, the, the people that, that question whether or not he was good enough to play at that level uh, really drive him. And yeah. uh, now I think that, that that those voices might get a little louder now, and I think that's exactly what Justin will use yeah. as his motivation to continue to get better. Well, you know, I've been t saying the same thing about what a great job Coach Martin has done building up the recruiting class already. And uh, I forgot about Desmond Ringer. I mean, he's a beast now. Yeah, he's a Georgia kid. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He's 6'11", Eagles Landing. I um, think he played for the Georgia Stars last spring. And then, um, I, 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 you know, you might not have mentioned him because he's not in the 2013 class, but, you know, Marcus uh, Stroman is just a, a great guy. Yeah, getting Walmart. Marcus Stroman out of Keenan, I mean, that's a big, I mean, that's, uh, you know, when, you know I, in, when South Carolina has been good, it's been usually with some South Carolina, some key South Carolina kids, and now you've got some Darius, and you've yeah. got Justin, and you've got Marcus Stroman. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's three South Carolina kids who conceivably could all be playing on the perimeter for several years. So that's, that's right. uh, those are the kind of kids. If you're going to be good, you got to get. That's right. That's right. That was Tyler Hooker who will go to the line. Yeah. You put those four together. Um, you know, in two years at least, that's a that's a very good. Th those are very good pieces to build around. Yeah, they definitely, uh, Coach Martin and staff definitely hit the ground running, did a great job building relationships and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, either keeping the lead with those kids or making up making up lost ground. Uh, so it would be interesting to see uh, see them get on the court this year and see how they look differently. You know, I, I really uh, like Coach Horn and his staff, but I want to see Coach Martin and, and those guys do well. Yeah. So that's uh, Trey Smith again. He's been all over the place. He, Trey Smith, um, kind of falls into I know he's you know maybe even a lot more skilled player but he falls into that uh, Devontae Washington class for me today as far as activities right real, really getting after it wholesale substitutions here for team four yeah that's Dozier coming back in and Javis Howard coming back in and Jerry Coleman coming back in so uh, along with um, is it uh, Boyd? Yeah, Boyd from Mid Carolina coming back in. And Trey Smith stays. So this is this is as good as a five five man group as we'll see all day, right? Yeah, this is uh, this is this is a, this is a nice group. Uh, the gambling on defense there. The hookers almost made him pay. It's Coleman with the rebound. He finds Trey Smith. Smith finds Coleman. You can count that. No. <laughs> Don't that was called call right. A little deeper, a little deeper than normal. That, <laughs> that was the fan in me. Coleman out. with the still. <laughs> everybody knows. Everybody knows back home that I'm a big Southern Stampede <laughs> guy. You know, lots of those guys are Augusta guys. 
So I, I claim Jared as one of our own. I'm impressed, Coach, by the uh, by the coaching here. You know, the guys, they had a little practice maybe off in the other Yeah, gym. that's where we were trying to give everybody a few minutes to practice, to, you know, put in a little simple, uh, uh, some concepts to play, you know, because obviously this is not about coaching. It's about, about the players being able to play. But uh, you just give them a little framework to yeah. work together in so that they're able to use their skills. And I'm really impressed. Boyd is really fast with the ball, but yeah. Davis Howard beat everybody down the court again, doing yeah. a great job as a post player of running the court. Sheed Robinson misses the bunny. Dozier pushes it in transition. Uh, kind of got in a little too deep and mishandled it. You know, and I know this is just exposure stuff, but um, one thing about Dozier being, you know, a young guy growing into his body, no matter how skilled he is, um, you know, that high school, uh, that varsity level, 17, 18-year-olds, he, you know, it's a challenge. He, he might be one of the best sophomores in the country, but he's going to have to come to play every night. Right, right, and that's, I mean, that's really, um, you know, the biggest thing to understand with, uh, with Dozier is just that he's, you know, he's kind of growing into to what he's capable of, you know, and, uh, you know, his, uh, his knowledge of the game, his vision, uh, his skill set are all very advanced for his age. Uh, and so his body will, 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 will develop into uh, what it needs to be. And that's Javis with a nice face-up move. Tries to make an interior pass to Coleman, which probably, probably should have just went up with the shot there. Yeah, nice unselfish play, but, yeah, that jump hook would have been right what the doctor ordered. So that's number 60. I had his name at the tip of my tongue. That's uh, Copeland from Southside with another basket. Here's Trey Smith getting a high screen from Howard. Very nice basketball. Uh, pick and roll. It's hard to defend that if you do it well. Trey did a great job of using the Smith, the, the screen, and then uh, Javis rolled and got an easy basket when, when he gave him the ball back. The deep three by Booker there. Here's Rashid Robinson. Shahid Robinson? Shahid Robinson. Shahid Robinson. Robinson. Black's getting a lot of opportunities here. This will be their fourth shot of possession. Yeah. Robinson for another three from the corner. Here's Jared Coleman out to Chris Boyd. You the mentioned this, Javis Howard again. He's doing, he's doing a terrific job of running the court. You know, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, obviously I think uh, Howard's a Division One player, so no, there's none of the coaches who are recruiting him are here watching. But that's one of the things they like to hear is uh, how active he's been. I think we're going to play the screen and roll from Trey Smith to Javis Howard here. Yeah. Yeah. Travis did a good job of sealing the defender. Yeah. Went up and finished the play. Yeah, Smith's guy um, switched to him, so that's a guard, and he just kind of backed him in there like you're supposed to do. So we ended up with a one-point game here with 12 minutes left. You know, yeah. Duggan tested to Dozier. He's got Howard posting on the block. Ball screen that doesn't use it. Oh, look. <laughs> Dozier ends up on the floor. I don't know exactly what happened there. Been, been watching a little NBA. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's 61. Is that Jordan Dingle from South Aiken? That's right, Jordan Dingle, yes. Coleman trapped in the corner. Hits it out to Duggan. A little pump fake. Wide open three. Very nice. Hopefully we can get a replay of that. I like the control there. Pump fake, nice little easy dribble to the yeah. right. Caleb Duggan's done a good job. He's, uh, you know, St. James is a, a school that hasn't had a ton of success in basketball, but uh, they've been very good the last couple of years in, a, in large part um, due to how well Caleb Duggan's played. You know, just a, a really uh, aggressive playmaker uh, who has. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and play that replay here. We might hopefully won't miss too much action. Maybe we'll do it at the next dead ball. Well, no, we're going to go ahead and play it. And shot right. fake goes flying by and knocks down the three. Not sure why he went to the free throw line <laughs> when the foul was on somebody else. Yeah. But 
Hey, it's uh, it's the preseason for everybody. Right, right. right it's right. easy to say when you're sitting over here with a headset on. Not so easy when you're on the bench. Yeah, we have replay now, so we can really be smart. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told people. You know, I, um, it's, it's been amazing that you know when, when you're uh, when you're on the bench and coaching, you know, it's you, you make some mistakes. You don't always make the right decision. But uh, you know, last season when I moved back to the to the bleachers, all of a sudden I knew the right play to make every time. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. It's amazing how much smarter I got, how much more I knew about basketball when I didn't have to make any decisions before the play happened. Yeah, stick with me. You'll be a genius. <laughs> so Duggan anticipates the pass, knocks it out of bounds. So again, my name's Chad Cook. I'm with uh, Player 360, Netcast Sports, AUG, B-Ball, whatever you want to call us. And, um, and Nate Livesay here is, uh, is with me, joining us. He's got the knowledge of, of these guys. Now, that was number seven. That was Devontae nine. Anderson from Rich Northeast. He and uh, Aaron Scott are going to give Jason Powell a very good guard combo there. They that's are going to give two guys big, big and strong. That's going to be a, be a hard, hard to defend that just because both those kids are so physical and uh, uh, able to put the ball on the floor and score and shoot it as well. And, and Jason's one of the best coaches in South Carolina as well. Does a great job with them. So uh, they'll, they'll be fun to watch. Yeah, we, we saw a lot of Aaron Scott in game one, and we were so impressed. He's one of my favorites. There's that control by Duggan again. He finds P.J. Dozier. Dozier misses. Here comes Notorious Booker. Love the name. Nice spin. Oh, nice nice spin finish. Finishing traffic. He's done a couple things l lately that have been pretty impressive. Yeah, Newberry, uh, you know, Booker is one of the, the players that led Newberry to the state championship game in Dubai this year. They got off to a, uh, a really, a really slow start in the state championship game. I think they uh, got down 15 or 16 to nothing and, and then came back to uh, cut the deficit to one or two at the buzzer. Actually had a, sh had a shot to win the game, but just couldn't quite make it back all the way. And so uh, and here's Booker with his finish and transition. Nice little spin move. We appreciate that from our technical crew playing those replays. Um, maybe next time we'll, we'll wait to a dead ball so we don't miss a little bit of action. But those guys are doing a fabulous job. We're really, yeah, really Coach. excited about it. And Gary Coleman finishes one inside now. Yeah. So lots, of, lots of people using the pump fake. I think uh, they realize there's maybe not a lot of defensive discipline <laughs> yeah. today, and uh, uh, a shot fake is a good, shit, good, good way to get yourself an easy shot. You know, you mentioned Coleman down there finishing in the paint. Um, he, uh, you know, we know how well he shoots the ball, but he seems to be uh, maybe lifting some weights. He's getting a little bigger, a little stronger. Um, I think he, he might surprise some people with his ability to put it on the floor. Now, correct me if I'm mistaken, Greenwood struggled a little bit last year, if I'm not mistaken. I think they did. Uh, I'm, I'm not, not exactly sure. Yeah, I think I looked it up. So, you know, he might have the opportunity to, to do a lot of things on the high school court and, uh, you know, to try to breathe some life into that yeah, program. Yeah, I mean, Greenwood's a 4A program, and so honestly, if you're, if you're relying on a sophomore, you know, to be one of your key players, that, that's a learning experience. You know, some of my, uh, at Sumter, some of my most talented players, you know, had difficult years as sophomores because it's yeah. just a, it's a big transition from JV basketball uh, to, to the varsity scene when you're playing against everybody else's best players. And so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going into it and having a year of varsity experience really makes a big difference. Yeah, that was Tavarius Hampton a moment ago on the finish. There's Jordan Dingle out of South Aiken. He, he misses that one. Here's Caleb Duggan the other way. It's a 51-51 game here with eight minutes to go. Yeah. And they're competing, too. There's Jared Coleman. The nice cut. Didn't really end it up in traffic there, yeah. but a good hard cut. And a careless turn over there. So we got some, some substitutions for both teams here. Hey, D up, let's go, D up. So the ball's going to be inbounded to Dozier. Okay, so here's P.J. Dozier. He's going to get a screen from Coleman, maybe, who will, yeah. I'm sure, pop to the open three. Very nice. Yeah, there he is, wide open. Well put together. Kind of a Got a smaller lineup out there for White and uh, doing a little different things on offense. 
and uh, Coleman was able to be the beneficiary and get a wide open three. So that's yeah. four or four threes for him in this game. Yeah. And I think uh, three of them have come from passes from Dozier. So yeah, that's right. Uh, see Dozier come up a little limp. Hopefully he's fine. It's easy to spot Dozier and Trey Smith wearing the uh, neon yeah. fluorescent yeah. Uh, shoes there. That's right. Now, so Trey Smith, I know why uh, – Jared Coleman's got those shoes on. He played in that Peach Jam. I think that's where he gets those. Did, uh, did who Trey play uh, AAU ball for? No, I, I think uh, I think I, I misspoke. I think oh, you meant uh, Coleman. Coleman. Coleman and Dozier gotcha. had the shoes yeah. on. So. Well, while we're at it, who did do you know who Trey played with? Trey may have played for Carolina Hurricanes. Gotcha. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah. And here is Trey Smith, number 71, white, out of Hillcrest. Hillcrest yeah. High School, yeah. Those are being guarded by Jalen Reed. That's a matchup of some talent right there. Got a foul off the ball there, I think. I don't know if our guys have it, but I would love to see that when Dozier uh, came off the screen and roll from Coleman and then fed him for the three-pointer, Jared Coleman from the top of the key. I'd love to see that That's one quick again. Quick shot by Boyd. This is DeMarcus Montgomery out of Lancaster. Montgomery is the young man we talked about with, who makes straight A's, very good kid. Uh, Dozier gets in to read and thought he forced a turnover, but the ball is going to stay with Black. Here comes Richie Austin from Wando in for Dozier. Power Hooker uses the screen by McCourt. He's got a tough match right there. He's got a Boyd switches back on him. So that's Nick Isaac out of Ridgeview. This being his home court, six foot five senior, number 48 for Black. Gets fouled on a little turnaround jump shot. He'll he'll shoot one free throw that counts for two if he makes it. Yeah, that was a tough uh, tough foul. Not the kind of shot you want to foul somebody on. And he made him pay for it. Gives Black a 55-54 lead with six minutes to play. Coleman with another catch and shoot. Quick, quick release, I like that. Yeah, shot over Reed, really didn't even get contested. Nice catch by McCoy, I guess you'd expect that from a wide receiver. Yeah, he caught that with no problem, snatched it. Yeah, Northwestern has had some uh, really impressive athletes play wide receiver for him. Trey Smith shooting a three over McClure. Rebound, kicked out to Jerry Coleman. Reed's going to lead the break himself. I guess it's more of a delayed break here. Nice. Kind of like that. Big six foot seven Reed taking it strong to the basket against, I think that was Trey it Smith. It was against Trey Smith. I think that's, uh, I think just watching Reed play this summer in the, in the, in the in the fall here. Uh, I think he really considers himself probably more of a perimeter player. And so, uh, you know, it, it's nice. You know, everybody, all the, you know, all bigs want to be guards and guards want to be bigs <laughs> and all that kind of good stuff. But it's it's really, you know, kids need to understand that being able to play two positions is so valuable. Yeah. You know, you can, you can do things at two positions. It makes you a much tougher matchup. And uh, honestly, it gives coaches a more chance to play you. Yes. you know, if you're not limited to one spot, they can, they can play you in different situations. So always good to be for those, those fours that want to be threes to be good fours first. Go, go, go. Anybody here read again, leading the fast break, has very good perimeter skills. Tyler Tough Hooker. finish by Hooker. Again, the 6'7 guy leading the break, kicking it to the 5'11 guy with the power move for the finish. Uh, two very good players. Coleman misses the three, and Javis Howard runs down the rebound. That's two misses in a row for Coleman. Don't say that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing you know, that because he's such a good shooter, the next time he's open, he's not going to hesitate to put it up. I'll tell you what, Coach, I just got a text from a good friend of mine. He's a um, head coach at uh, Bethune Bowman. And he says he's watching on the internet and our commentary is a little bit behind the action. So if that's the case, anybody who's watching, we apologize for that. We're working on things. Um, hopefully 
you're still able to enjoy the broadcast. Our technical crew is, um, I'm sure, all over that. And uh, we appreciate it to Jamar Washington. We appreciate Jamar Washington giving us a heads up on that. <laughs> Doing our best, Coach. <laughs> Doug enforcing the steal and hitting it out to Howard. Howard finds Trey Smith for a layup. All right, one point ball game, 57-56. I think that's the thing, you know, you, you see when we get those two and three player combinations is when the basketball looks the best here. Yeah. You know, when multiple players are touching it and, and sharing the basketball, that's when uh, basketball looks like it's being played the way it's supposed to be played. And, and that's been the general rule. There is more of that going on than the other kind. Right, and there's Howard kicking it ahead to Duggan for an easy layup. One point lead. Right back up by one. And this looks like it's going to come down to the wire here. Oh, bad. Yeah, that was the best Careless turnover right there. <laughs> Playing with one hand. I mean, that's one of, the, one of my pet peeves as a basketball coach. Yeah. Passing and catching with, with, with one hand. You know, it's just, you eliminate so many mistakes. You have so much better control when you pass and catch with two hands and just, you know, make the easy play instead of trying to make the sports center play or the pretty play. Just, just get it done. Well, and then another thing goes along with that play. Nice just move by Howard there. Forces, forces Reed to foul him. Another thing you got, um, I always call it my guys dribbling the ball into your possession. You know, if it's loose and they try to, you right. know, yeah, you got to grab, grab, the, grab the ball with, with both hands. And that's really, you know, there's so many of those things that just make the difference between being a talented player and being a very good player. Is, you know, people who are being willing passers, you know, th these perimeter players that dribble in and pass as a last resort, a pass because I can't do anything else. You know, that's not the kind of passer you want to be. That's nice a little matchup there between Howard right. and Reed. Yeah, I know. I think Howard got the better of it both times, but he wasn't able to get a basket. He missed a shot there and uh, uh, forced a foul in the first one, but very good move. Got a tweet from, or got a text message from Marcus Shockley at basketballelite.com. They do a great job there. He's very impressed with uh, the young man, uh, Rontavious McClure. Nice look there by Howard. And Trey Smith misses the layup. See if Black can turn it into a basket in transition. Another, another careless turnover. It's Black's having a hard time holding on to the ball right now. Looks like we got a 59-58 game here with 118 to play. Yeah. Not, not like the first one, 109-94. No, right? no, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if these teams aren't quite as explosive or they're playing a little better defense or a combination of both, yeah. but uh, definitely a very different score here. I think this game, um, you know, we've got a, a, a better mix of inside players. Right, yeah, that, um, especially team one, uh, you know, that team is just absolutely loaded on the perimeter, you know, with uh, with uh, Nate Motley and DJ Brooks and Alex Brown and Aaron Scott. And uh, I tell you, what I was really impressed with as well is uh, uh, for team two is Tariq Simmons, the eighth grader oh, from Alcorn. So uh, good. And that's, uh, you know, he is, that's a kid that uh, if he continues to work hard and, and, and listens to the right people, has a chance to be a, to be a good player. I mean, he was uh, you know, uh, I don't want to be one of those guys that, that hypes players. You don't want to say he's the best eighth grader in the world? No, I definitely don't that's want to say that. That's what most people would say, right? Uh, he's a very talented kid. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a kid with a, a bright future if he continues to develop. So, right. you know, I, I'm one of those guys who probably undersell guys a little bit because, you know, expectations can really hurt a young kid if, you, if they're not treated the right way. You know, you've got to develop. No matter how good you are, you got to get better. Yeah. Notorious Booker with the strip of Caleb Duggan. They get uh, the white team gets a break there. Duggan tried to come off that screen and cross the ball over, and Booker got his hands on it. So we're under one minute to play. Uh, white is down one with the basketball. Yeah. Looks like uh, Javis Howard wants to do the screen and roll with. There he slips the screen, but looks like Dozier's going to try to get it. Oh, nice, nice play. So that's the first time I recall. Dozier attacking the basket, yeah. and it, it's telling that, you know, the game's one-point game, less than a minute to go, so he's going to um, attack. And that was, he did a nice job of using his inside hand to finish there. I know we were talking earlier about using your left hand on the left side, but that was one of those opportunities where he needed to go up right-handed to get the play fall to the basket, and Dozier did a great job of recognizing that and doing that draw on the foul. Yep. Uh, but Unable the free finish, throw. So, so Black, Black has the ball in the lead with 45 seconds left. And if you One wonder if they break. would uh, hold the ball, they will not. That is number 11. It's uh, Kevin Crawford from Blythewood making it a three-point game, but Trey Smith answers right back. Wow. Transition layup and the foul. 
great finish by Trey Smith. Again, yeah, very hard to keep Trey Smith in front of you. Ooh, they called that foul on the floor, I think. Oh, they, they are waving off the basket, and Trey Smith's got a big smile on yeah. his face. Don't think he would have that smile in the regular season. Right, right. They better watch Coleman after he throws the ball in here. Yeah, Duggan gets the ball on the baseline. He's in a tough spot, though. There's Coleman. Coleman. Contested three. No good. Loose ball. And that's uh, Crawford again with the rebound. Okay. I like it, Coach. They're, they're down three. They're fouling. They're trying to lengthen the game. So I'm not sure what happened. It was a one-on-one. One, he missed the shot. Yeah, I think so why, why are we not that's playing? a little rusty here. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. He missed the free throw. And it was one-on-one. Yeah. One, yeah. So. Unless it's a lane violation, I, I can't call it. It's almost as if he saying he has two shots, but he held up the one-on-one, on one, which is obviously the right call. Uh, Copeland, Copeland makes the shot. All right, so 15 seconds to go, uh, five-point lead. We're going to go ahead and shoot again. So the, the first shot must have been a lane violation. That's got to be why he's going to shoot again here because he made that yeah. second shot. So it should be 62-58. Now it's 62-58. Now it's 62-58. Well, we've got 15 seconds left. Looks like the black team will hold on here. It's been a good game, good two games to kick things off here at the South Carolina Basketball Coaches Association Elite Camp here at Ridgeview High School in Columbia, South Carolina. Lots of good players, lots of good play, and lots of good people here in the gym. You look around and you see um, a group of referees that are here doing training. You see a lot of high school coaches here supporting the young men that they coach. Um, good deal of uh, Division II, Division III, NAIA, Junior College basketball coaches, and Nate Livesey joining us. And, and, and before we go here, we're going to take a look at that pick and roll that I asked the guys to queue up for us. You got Jared Coleman setting the screen and popping, and P.J. Dozier feeding him. We'll, we'll, we'll get that out there in one second. Here it comes. Very smart play here. You know you have a shooter. The two guys Both go guys with go Dozier. Go Dozier and Coleman wide open for the three. Some, some pretty good players coming up in the next game as well. Um, team five has Patrell Rogers from Wilson High School. He's very solid. Duggan gets the basket to cut the lead to three. But it's going to be too little too late. And then for team six, a uh, kid to really watch, uh, Khalil Hall from Lake Mary. He's a terrific player. So uh, th those, that should be a really good matchup between those two guys. Patrell Rogers and Khalil, uh, Khalil Hall should be a nice little matchup of point guards there. Great. Well, we'll take a break between games. We really appreciate you joining us, Coach. You're welcome back any moment. You can, you know, you make the call. And I'm Chad Cook. We